In this video, I'm going to be replying to your guys' comments that you've sent over, good and bad. Let's get into it. So on your video, uh, Watch Expert reveals the best all-round Rolex, Darren Reed responded and said, it's none of those. It's the Rhodium Yachtmaster 40 mil. Yeah, I mean, the thing is for me, everybody, you know, is entitled to their opinion. He's got his own opinion, which is fine by me. He's wrong. <laughs> But, you know, you've got to respect other people's opinions. I mean, we see every model day in, day out. We know what's popular. I'm not saying the Yacht 40 is not a nice watch. It is a nice watch. But as far as markability, desirability, we can honestly say the ones that we chose are the top three. So, you know, appreciate your comment. Glad you've picked one you like, but you're wrong. <laughs> in my opinion, the GMT is the number one. It does everything the sub does and more. Triple lock, waterproof, and also GMT function. More comfortable on the wrist and more dressing. Yes and no, I agree to that. So what I'd say to you is we sell more, probably some Mariners than GMTs. So you're comparing two completely different looking watches. The GMT is obviously, like you said, the polished links is a bit more dressy. Most people want to go under the radar than, you know, look at me. We do sell both models. They're both beautiful and very popular but the sub will outsell the GMT all day long. So we voted it the winner of the best all round Rolex for a reason. If you haven't seen that, give it a look guys. But yeah, I mean, both beautiful watches. You can't really choose wrong, but if you're comparing them for that reason, for me, the sub is the only winner. Uncle Jonga has commented. <laughs> I've said for years that the black sub <laughs> date is the only watch you need. One and done in every situation, it works flawlessly. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Uncle Jonga. Good comment. I definitely agree with you on that. The sub date for me, if I had to choose one watch to wear for the rest of my life and I could not change it for any other watch, I would choose a Submariner. Date or non-date, that's personal preference, but definitely a Submariner because literally will function in any situation you need it to. So that could be holidays, weekends, work, sports, swimming, you name it, that watch will be there and it'll still look smart and you'll still feel special. So yeah, I do agree, you know, the sub is the best all round watch. You're gonna like this. Yeah, I can tell. You are 100% right, the Submariner is the best, followed by the GMT2. The Daytona, however, is such a hideous and hyped watch. Wow. Hyped, yeah, hyped for a reason, yes. Hideous, no. You know, that is the most desired watch. You've probably seen in the videos that you will ever see anybody ever wanting to buy. Why does that command a, a market price of three times more than the RRP compared to other models? Yeah, the GMT is a nice watch, but it doesn't command three times the price. Hideous I think is a completely wrong term. You know, you are entitled to your opinion, but I've got to be honest with you, another one, you're wrong. Hey Charlie, if you had 20K, this is in dollars, and you were looking to capitalize on the correction, which three watches would you get? Would you buy them now or wait a little longer? How would you anticipate holding them before they sold? I'm a newbie trying to get into the game. 20K, whether it's sterling or dollars, is not gonna buy you a lot for your money. You're not really gonna get three watches out of that that are collectible or worth collecting. So my advice would be to buy one watch, make it one of the more sought after watches, GMT, Batmans, Pepsis, Hulks, things we've discussed in other videos. Make sure obviously the condition is good, make sure it's a full set, new or nearly new if you can. Holding wise, how long should you hold for? Normally, we'd always advise our clients to hold for at least 12 months. So 12 months is a, a normal length of time to see a nice return. Unprecedented times, beginning of the year, this year 2022 was, you could literally hold a watch for a week, but that's like not the norm in our industry. We're back to normal trading now. So yeah, 12 months and more, and you'll see a nice return on your investment. Pick the nice watches, pick the very collectible ones, the ones we've mentioned, and hopefully you'll have pleasure of looking at it and see a nice return. I don't agree at all. The prices are still going to fall for sure. There's going to be some quote stability up until maybe Christmas, but prices are going to crash even more at the beginning of next year. Yes, yeah, so my answer to you, David, is obviously thanks for your comment. I'd like to know how you're basing your comment and what you're basing it on. You know, we are experts in our field. We do this day in, day out. We are a well-established dealership, so we do know the market better than most. So I do appreciate your comment, but I'd like to know what you're actually basing that on. You know, the market has stayed Stabilized. We can firmly say it has definitely stabilized. Some prices have actually, we've seen them started to go up. So some models, a root beer, for example, a full rose gold root beer, they've started to go back up. A Starbucks, which is obviously the green bezel uh, Submariner date, they've started to go back up. You know, there's quite a few models, that's just to name a few, that have started to go back up. We've been selling more of the bigger pieces, 30 to 40K models than we have done all year in the last six weeks. The collectors are coming out, the investors are coming out, they're buying one, two or three at a time. They're really good value now. So they're what we'd advise you to buy 
by. But yeah, I mean, saying there's going to be another crash, no one's got a crystal ball. But one thing I can tell you, I've been in this business a long time now and I have a good track record of reading the market. So one thing I can say for sure is the market has stabilized for now. We have seen an influx of buyers coming to us to buy watches. That has not stopped. We've been even busier over the last, say, two months than we have done for some time. So that tells you the slappy tight there for the market. You know, I'd like to know if you actually own any watches. Have you ever bought any watches? Do you own a Rolex? Or is it just a comment on just something that you've read on the news? So please feel free to reply back to me. I'll be happy to answer your questions, but I'd just like to know how you base your comment on. John has commented saying, it's understandable why you would push the narrative that is stabilized because it's your business. Unfortunately, it hasn't. And the Rolex prices are going to tank more. Unfortunately, all dealers are trying hard to convince us otherwise. Those who say they are clever and are buying are going to run into serious losses still. Thanks John for your comment. I back myself on my business and what I do know. Some people will always say, these videos are coming out from dealers like us because they've got a business and they're here to sell watches. Yeah, correct. We have got a business and we have to sell watches, but I'm not here to lie to you. I'm not here to make things up. I want you to have as much information as possible that wasn't given to me or other people when they were looking at a watch or looking at the industry and worried how the market was going. So I want to do my best to give you the truthful, honest information on the current market. If you don't believe that, that's down to you. I don't have to prove myself to you. There's certain people out there will always say, oh, you're a dealer, you're doing it, you're doing it for profit, you're doing it for that. Yeah, I've got a business, but that's not the reason for the video. The video is to help you guys out there that genuinely want educating and helping on the current market and where your money's safe and where your money's not safe. And that is the purpose of my videos. So on the video, Watch Dealer reveals the safest way to buy a Rolex online. Callie Rich said, you don't have to go for a Rolex, it's just overhyped. There's so much cheaper and better out there. Yeah, so hi Callie, thanks for your comment. I'd like to see what you classify as cheaper and better out there. There are other brands out there, there's some really good, you know, watchmakers making decent watches. They're not in the same caliber or category as Rolex, so I would like to know which ones you're actually referring to. As far as buying and owning a special piece, other than Patek Philippe, Audemars Piquet and, and Vacheron Constantine, the top three Holy Trinity. Rolex are, you know, in my opinion, part of the Holy Trinity. The watchmaking expertise may be not as good as the top three, but investment-wise, desirability-wise, and marketable-wise, there's no better investment than Rolex or pleasure of wearing a Rolex. Everybody's holy grail and everybody's achievement is to actually own a Rolex. There are other watchmakers out there and they are nice, but they are not a Rolex. So on your dress watch video, Edgar Sanchez has commented saying, the date just, just looks better with a fluted bezel and Jubilee. Yeah, that's a tough one really, because I do like the date just for one with a fluted on a Jubilee bracelet. That's one, one watch I would say is probably the best combination for that watch. I also do like if it's a smooth bezel version with the Oyster bracelet. I think that works really well as well because obviously, you know, the bracelet matches the bezel. But I think on the 41, I think you're right. I think if you're, whether you go for the steel version, the steel and gold, yellow gold, or the steel and rose gold, you know, definitely go for the Jubilee Fluid 41. Such a nice watch and a great watch for your money. Literally wear anywhere, anywhere anytime you will feel special you can go and then for the rhodium dial or the blue dial or even the most popular wimbledon dial but either of those three in that you're right so on your rolex versus judah video philip c has said judah always feels like a cheap knock to rolex why would anyone ever yeah i kind of don't get why people say that to be honest with you because for me some people are never going to afford a rolex watch so Tudor is not a rolex let's get that first and foremost it's not a rolex yes is it under the rolex umbrella yes is it a nice watch yes is it good value for money yes what are the watches in that price category amigas do you compare Tudor to amiga yeah they're both you know comparable for different reasons you know so saying that why would you even get near to a rolex because it's a Tudor i think you're wrong you know there's some people out there that want the look of a vintage Rolex. That's where Tudor come into it. There's many nice models that they do from GMTs to the, the one like the Blackberry uh, Pro that we did a video on. So so yeah, I, you know, I think you definitely are wrong on that because if I, if I wasn't in my position and I had five grand to spend on a watch, I would be either going to Amiga or Tudor. But for me, I would go for Tudor because I think the nicer looking watches than the Amiga. Joe Rad said, get to Seiko, exclamation mark. <laughs> It's an over-engineered beast. No comment. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> What the fuck is Seiko? Seiko is sold at H. Samuels, like that type of place. Yeah, so. Argos. 
Yeah, Argos, <laughs> yeah. I think they're about 200 pounds. I mean, again, you know, well, you can't, they're just, no. Anyway, not interested. Rollies and tattoos as commentating. Tattooed hands make the watches pop. Correct. I do think they do. I think it depends on your skin colour as well. So it depends on, you know, if you're quite pasty or pale, then tattoos look completely different. And then obviously a watch look different again. But I think if you've got a decent sort of skin tone and you've got tattoos, especially like on your hands, for me, I do think they look better. I've always said that, you know, and obviously I've got tattooed hands, so I'm going to say that. But I generally do think that. And when I put watches on my wrist, I do think, you know, it does make the watch stand out. They make it look a bit more 3D and, and yeah, good comment. Rodrigo has commented saying, still overpriced, very overpriced for mass-produced watch yeah mass produced so let's get to the bottom of mass produced first so rolex produce about a million watches a year audemars pk i think they produce around two to three hundred thousand protect even less so yeah we're not talking like mass produced watches you know the supply and demand obviously is proof there so people say they're overhyped overproduced you know some people unfortunately make comments they have no indication of buying a watch they just follow the market they kind of like put a bit of downer on the market try make it a negative thing everything's crashing you know they're overhyped all this sort of thing so i'm not speaking to you personally and saying that's exactly your reason but there are people out there who do comment for them reasons they're quite negative people and they will say things just because it makes them feel better because to be honest they're probably never going to get a rolex they've no intention of buying one but they just like to stamp other people's dreams down or crush their thoughts or dreams so unfortunately there's, there are people out there who do feel that way on the video questions watch dealers get asked all the time go patch for glaives commented saying do you feel like you are brackets grey market dealers part of the problem in regards to the hyperinflating the prices of watches everyone knows that ad's are shady as you have to buy other expensive pieces in order to get the one you want but surely the prices people are expected to pay now from a grey market dealer makes them just as bad. Yeah, you see, we've got this term grey market dealer and I've covered this in, in other videos. So I'm not upset by the comment grey market dealer. Some people call us grey market dealers. I like to refer to independent dealer. But for me, the, the thing is, and, and I think I replied to another comment the other day. So we were buying and selling watches before the supply and demand problem. So I was buying and selling watches under this price when you could readily go to any AD in any city in the UK or even abroad for that matter and buy a watch that was actually available in the window for you to buy. So when I was selling watches under list, I was not called a grey market dealer. I was called an independent dealer or something else, but not a grey market dealer. So therefore, now that market has become the way it is, so there is this waiting list. We do sell for over list. You know, people are on the list for financial purposes. They're now being called flippers. That's their name. And because we buy and sell in the marketplace, whether from a trusted dealer source or from somebody who's bought, you know, from a, an AD to, to sell on, a flipper, we're now called grey market dealers and they're now called flippers so it's kind of like a funny thing for me you know if you want to brand somebody with a name that's fine we were buying and selling before the price increases before the over list and before the waiting list and all of a sudden we've evolved into the marketplace we are now we've not changed we still buy and sell for a profit that has not changed it's just the market has changed and actually instead of prices being under list they're over list so i hope that answers your question and uh, yeah so finally on the video, box and papers, what does it actually mean? Lucy Shop One commented, really appreciate the care you show towards the important details. Wish I could find dealers like you in the States. Thanks Lucy for your comment. I think I did reply as well. It's quite funny really, because since we started our YouTube channel three or four months ago now, we get so many emails and comments from people and messages direct, just saying, you know, really appreciate the advice and didn't know that this, you know, these videos were out there. I didn't know this information was out there. I have been looking online, it is a mind field i've gone on forums there's no clear information so i have been told quite a lot by people direct to me thanking me saying you know i really appreciate it. and that that's the reason why i do these videos because for me you know if i was looking to buy something i'm looking at getting into a market or for whatever reasons you know i wish there was somebody like me on youtube doing videos who you could actually think yeah you know what it is? i appreciate that you know it's, it's good good information it's trust building i can go take that information away and even if they don't come shopping here they can go take it away and hopefully they won't get burnt or have a bad experience or buy from you know, a dealer that's selling something that they shouldn't be or it isn't supposed to be, they're paying the right way, they don't get scammed or ripped off or all these sorts of things that everybody I'm showing the life has had happen to them. You know, that's why I do these videos so that hopefully one day, even if one person didn't get ripped off or scammed because of my videos, that's enough for me. So I really appreciate your comment, Lucy. Unfortunately, I do live in the UK. I would love to live in the States, but I don't. But yeah, I mean, you know, keep watching the videos, keep with the comments. And like I say, you know, I really do appreciate that.